Hello, everyone. Welcome to Within the Frame. I'm Kim bo -kyung. Another rate freeze. South Korea's central bank has maintained its key interest rate at 3.5 percent for the ninth straight session. This comes amid slower-than-expected inflation moderation, high household debt, and sluggish domestic demand. And as the U.S. Fed is carefully considering when to begin rate cuts, it is widely expected that the BOK will wait and see what decision is made. That being said, how did experts see the BOK's call today, and what should the BOK consider? For more details, we invite Kang Minju, senior economist from ING. Minju, welcome. Hi. Hi. And we also have Professor Shim Myung-gyu from Yonsei University. Good to have you with us, Professor Shim. Hi, thank you for having me. All right, Professor Shim, first question. So South Korea's central bank held its key benchmark rate steady at 3.5%. Now, we are going to get to the specific reasons behind the decision. But before that, what were the reasons overall? Oh, well, I think there are several factors that hinder the BOK to change its key rate. The, the inflation rate is the first and the most important factor. It has not yet fully stabilized as the BOK wants, so the BOK cannot lower its the rate at this point. The inflation rate measured by CPI is still higher than what we used to observe before 2022. While the inflation rate has decreased a lot, it's still above the, the target of the BOK, so the BOK wants to wait until all the uncertainties go. Second, the inflation rate in the U.S. does not seem to become lower recently, which makes the Fed to hold its key rate at the same level for more than the market has expected. And the third reason is the potential of the market boom due to the potential government policies to expand the economy. To prevent the potential bubbles in the asset market, the BOK needs to raise the interest rate. However, as was em emphasized by separate institutions like the IMF, the household debt is really the problem in Korea. Under this situation, it's not that easy for the BOK to raise the interest rate because it may trigger a housing market meltdown, which can, which can eventually lead to another financial crisis. All right. Our Professor Shim thankfully recapped the overall reasons behind the decision. And now we are going to delve into factors one by one. Uh, Minju, first is inflation. So South Korea's consumer prices rose 2.8 percent on year in January, falling below 3 percent for the first time in six months. However, it did not reach the BOK's target rate, which is 2 percent. And some worry that there are still some lingering concerns that could accelerate inflation. Now, BOK went on with the rate freeze because of this reason, right? Yes, uh, we think that um, the BOK will acknowledge the uh, inflation uh, uncertainty for the coming months. Um, and um, Governor Lee Chang-yong repeated several times at um, is today's uh, press conference that uh, inflation in the last mile uh, to the target of 2% is expected to be quite bumpy. For the near-term outlook, uh, inflation in February will likely to pick up again. The Lunar New Year effect will probably dry up, drive up the uh, fresh food prices and also the weak Korean one and the recently rising uh, uh, global commodity prices. All these factors will be the reason behind for the expected pickup in February. For the more midterm outlook, actually, we believe that um, you know there have been uh, uh, the accumulated uh, price pressures for uh, rate uh, price hikes uh, from the public services to uh, utility fees. So this will be another factor for the upside risk. However, at the same time the uh, sluggish consumption and sluggish uh, domestic demand will likely uh, lift off some pressures from uh, the, the demand side, inflation pressure. So all for what overall inflation path uh, is still believed to be cooling off, but the path ahead will remain quite bumpy. All right, I see. Now, Professor Shim, in order to curb a potential inflation increase, the government extended the tax cut on fuel by an additional two months. Could you tell us more about the details of the policy and how effective is this going to be in taming inflation? 
Yes, uh, the current tax on gasoline, if we just think about gasoline that we usually uh, consume, it is uh, 651 per liter, which is about 201 lower if the policy is not extended further. So it is certain that it will be helpful for the households since it lowers the transportation costs, which can improve the consumer welfare. But if you think about the inflation, I'm not sure if it will be that effective to stabilize the inflation rate. The core inflation rate, which measures the inflation rate after ex excluding food and energy products, has decreased to 2.5% in January. This figure is the lowest level since 2022, implying that the price level, excluding the energy products, has stabilized a lot, a lot compared to before. So we can expect that the effect of the tax cut will not be that large. Rather, I think there can be a side effect because it can increase the inflation rate in the future by increasing the government debt because of the lower tax, according to the well-known theory in macroeconomics, which is so-called the fiscal theory of price. And this is because the inflation can effectively lower the burden of the government. So there will be there can be an inflationary pressure with this kind of uh, tax cut or similar policies. All right, I see your point. Another reason the BOK could not easily begin the rate cut is due to household credit, which reached a record high above 1,886 trillion Korean won. Now, the BOK said that we need to focus on slowed growth, but this definitely is one of the factors behind the rate freeze, right, Minju? Yes, um, actually, but uh, it, very interestingly, um, at today's uh, BOK meeting, the uh, household debt issue was little discussed. However, um, you know, the BOK cannot deny that the both high levels of household debt and also the excessively uh, rapid growth of it should be, you know, you know, main concerns for the BOK. Um, that's why I believe that um, even if the BOK goes into an um, easing cycle later this year, the speed and uh, magnitude of rate cuts should be very quite uh, limited and very gradual. Um, and also the, the debt deleveraging actually has reversed for the past two months, which is par partially because of the, uh, you know, uh, the government uh, policy changes on the housing measures. And we believe that um, if we, I mean, want to tackle down these issues, Probably there will be need some uh, policy coordination between the uh, the BOK and, and the government, and you know what you know BOK is hoping to see is you know more orderly cool down of the uh, uh, real estate market and also the uh, the private debt growth. All right, I see. Now, aside from inflation and household debt that we need, we discussed up until now, uh, if the country is expected to face, you know, severe slump or recession, it would have been hard for the BOK to keep its restrictive monetary policy. However, with expert recovery, it seems the central bank believes it is not in that phase just yet, as shown by consumer sentiment, which rose for a third consecutive month in February. Now, Professor Shim, would it be safe for us to say the economic outlook is not that bad? Uh, well, clearly these are the good signs, but I'm not that sure if there are enough factors that relieve our concerns on the aggregate economy. Mm. First, the ex export recovery does not seem to be that sustainable, unfortunately. According to the government, the value of export became lower in February and there was a trade deficit in at least two consecutive months. Even in January, the trade deficit was larger than that in February during the first 20 days of the month, which is not a good indicator for the aggregate economy. Second, wars on the global economy have not yet resolved. The interest rate is still high in most of the advanced economies because there is still the remaining concern for high inflation rate. Also, it is likely that most of the countries expecting elections this year will experience fiscal expansions leading to boom, so that it can potentially a threat for another inter inflation rate hike. Mm. In addition, 
geographical tension like the Ukraine-Russian war is still there, which potentially affects worldwide trade and price level. Lastly, while improvement in consumer sentiment is a good news in the sense that they can increase consumption in the future, the effect of consumption in generating a boom is somewhat restricted because the Korean economy heavily relies on export rather than relying on consumption. All right. Well, based on what our Professor Shim told us, there are definitely still some of the concerns that we need to consider. Now, Minju, we need to take a look at other economic situation abroad. First is Washington. Due to hotter than expected inflation figures, it is widely expected that the Fed would delay its de decision to cut the rate. How is the U.S. economy currently? It is true that the uh, U.S. economy has been very resilient mm -hmm. and more particularly consumers have held up pretty strong despite the, you know, the high borrowing environment continues. Um, and also the very quiet, uh, tight labor market and the very strong asset markets, uh, such as home price and equity market, is you know they are all supporting the high inflation. And also, you know, last you know, la last night the uh, FOMC meeting minutes released and it showed that you know the Fed is in no rush to you know make any rate cut. Uh, but what we are seeing, if we are seeing uh, the the momentum wise, we we believe that you know the gross momentum is slowing down. We recently saw that um, the retail uh, retail uh, sales uh, number came softened a bit, and also we hear more often about the you know cutting jobs in uh, tech uh, companies. So we believe that, you know, now we are seeing that some deceleration of uh, gross momentum in the U.S. economy. So we believe that um, uh, from first quarter of this year, we're going to see some uh, GDP number to rate. And um, ING sees now uh, the, the first rate cut by the Fed will come possibly in at the, the May meeting. All right, I see. So this, uh, although the Fed said that it is uh, not in a rush, since the growth momentum is slowing down, the ING is forecasting the rate cut to begin as early as May. All right. Now, Professor Shim, meanwhile, China's central bank has cut its key mortgage reference rate by a record amount, cutting its five-year loan prime rate to 3.95%. What does this hint at, and what impact would this have on South Korea's economy? Uh, well, I have two thoughts on this policy change that are opposite to each other. First, it seems that the status, status of the Chinese economy is worse than I expected, given that this adds to the negative signs on the housing market that are already publicly known. Several key players in the housing market in China, Evergrande as an example, have collapsed due to the lack of demand for the housing market. So I feel like if there is no any further action by the government, the housing market may really collapse. So in this sense, I am I receive some negative signs, but I also get some positive feelings because the government really tried to something that aims to revive the housing market so that it can potentially increase the growth of the Chinese economy. So. I'm not the certain on the direction how the low interest rate in China will influence the Chinese economy as well as the Korean economy because they can have the both uh, effects. Actually, I think we also need to consider another threat on the Chinese economy and also Korean economy, which is the re -elect, possible re-election of the former U.S. President Donald Trump. Mm. He says that if he's re-elected, the trade war will reoccur because he's believed to increase the traffic rate on the product, products imported from China to 60%, which is even much higher than the level that he imposed during his first term, which was 25%. So this will heavily affect both Chinese and Korean economy because both of the economies heavily depend on trade. All right, so we'll have to consider the possibility of Trump coming back to the presidential office in the United States. 
Now, based on our discussion today, uh, Minju, what factors would BOK have to consider before, you know, beginning the rate cut? Um, inflation and inflation expectations. Hmm. Both numbers should come down to the 2% level. Uh, uh, you know, the, from the recent uh, consumer survey, the inflation expectations anchored at 3% for a second month. And also inflation, uh, you know, we already discussed that it's quite bumpy, but you know, they have, I mean, the BOK has to, have, has to see a clear sign of, you know, downward trend. Uh, the next thing uh, I think that, you know, the consumption. Um, uh, at today's meeting, actually one of the uh, board members actually expressed the concerns that, um, you know, they can kind of, the, the board member opens an, an option for uh, a rate cut uh, to, you know, preemptively react on a slow slowdown in consumption, which is, so that means that, you know, we have to watch how the uh, uh, sluggish consumption um, deteriorate further uh, in the coming months. And um, actually regarding the, uh, you know, project financing or construction industry, we believe that, you know, BOK will not respond to those issues um, with the uh, policy action, I mean, rate cut action. I th we believe that, you know, they're going to uh, utilize their uh, more micro level uh, policy tools like uh, facility lending and uh, cutting the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, cost of the loans that, you know, that probably will come first if the situation worsens. All right, I see. Thank you for your explanation, Minju. Now, Professor Shim, shifting gears a bit here, the administration recently expressed its willingness to resolve the undervaluation of the country's stocks. Now, before we talk about how we are going to solve this, what are the reasons behind the so-called Korea discount? Well, uh, among many potential factors that can affect the Korea discount, I want to point out three major underlying factors behind the Korea discount. First, the geographical risk. Given that the investors require compensations for holding risk assets, and given that probability of the war in Korea is not zero, mm. it is not that surprising that there is a discount in Korean stock market. So the, the foreign investors require higher returns to take, to take some risk. Second, the corporate governance. Uh, as can be inferred from the recent case on the charges of the stock price manipulation and accounting fraud by Jeong Lee, the owner of Samsung, the corporate governance has been one of the major issues in the Korean economy, especially at the time when the market investors put really more attention on ESG that incorporates governance as well. It is natural to expect that the governance issue in Korea would be the factor that lowers the value of Korean stocks. Mm. Third, low dividend ratio. Uh, principle of pricing the stocks tells us that higher dividend implies higher price so that there would be more demand because it gives you more returns. However, according to some studies, the dividend payout ratio in Korea is less than 20% on average, which is far below than that is observed in the other countries. For instance, if you look at Chinese stock market, 70% of Chinese firms' dividend ratio was greater than 30% between 2013 and 2022. So it is natural that uh, price of the stock, Korean stock market would be undervalued than those in the Chinese stock market. Mm. Summarizing, it would be not that easy to attract more investors if the problems that I mentioned are well resolved. All right. Well, it would be not easy, but Minju, the government is trying to boost the attractiveness of the Korean stock market, and it is soon going to announce uh, some of the policies under the name of the Corporate Value Up Program. In what direction do you believe the FSC should go for the success of the program? Um, actually, I'm not an expert on the stock market, and already the Professor Shim already uh, mm -hmm. uh, answered to the, the most of the you know this question and um to improve the uh, the korean discount i'd say that um you know ensuring transparency of the corporate governance is a must and also dividend program 
uh, should be shifted to more toward to the uh, the stakeholder oriented or focused, and the government can provide some incentives to you know support this uh, process expedite. And um, lastly, I, if I can add, then you know probably you know the uh, the if the uh, the government um, kind of reviews the some of the uh, market restrictions such as you know short uh, the selling ban mm. that might help for for the the you know government um uh the what is called the sorry the value up program I think oh. that's it for me. <laughs> All right, thank you, Minju, for your advice and suggestion. Uh, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition. Thank you, Minju and Professor Shin, for your time and insights today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, that's all for Within the Frame tonight. Thank you for watching and goodbye.